So in this task 23 about inductance, we have a coil that has a certain um, inductance of one milli Henry. Um, this is already quite a lot, not, not too much, but quite quite a high quite a high inductance. Um, I've also brought some um, some some SCR meter today once again, and I've also brought different inductors. Maybe I can switch my camera to uh, full screen for a second. So I have, I have one inductor like this one here. Uh, this can has some inductance of 470 micro Henry. So it's about half of this. And this can handle 4 ampere, which is quite a high current. Um, and I have some smaller inductance like this one here. So we can, we can also measure inductances in a second. Um, and this one has a copper resistance of one ohm and it's connected to a voltage source with a source voltage of 10 volts. Uh, like what I could also do with my lab power supply that I've brought before. And so now the question is, what is the rate of change of current um, immediately after we connect the coil to the voltage source? Um, what is the constant current that we get in the coil after uh, waiting for a certain time? So if this coil is fully charged, finally charged, and what is the magnetic flux through the coil? So let's start with task A. Um, yeah, and so do you have any ideas how we could try to calculate this rate of change of the current in the circuit. There's an idea. Uh, we've got the formula Dl equals L times uh, the rate of change. Yeah, so we, we have this law of induction that tells us if we take a look at the voltage at the inductor, it's the inductance multiplied with this rate of change of the current, um, so time derivative of the current, and the current, of course, is also some, some time function. Mm. Okay, so then it might be a good idea to draw the circuit. So we have the voltage source, then um, we, we, we might have a let's say a switch or something that does this connection here. So the source is connected to our inductor and the inductor has resistance, the copper resistance of the wire that this inductor, that this coil is made of and it has the inductance itself. And so the formula that we have just written down is the formula here, the voltage across this inductance. And the current is, of course, the current that is flowing in this loop. And there we have just one current. And here we have our source voltage V. Okay. Um, yeah, so we know the inductance. This is the one milli Henry. We want to know this rate of change of current. Now the question is, what do we insert? What value do we use for, <coughs> for the voltage? Ten volts. Um, why? Why? Why do we use for the voltage across the inductor? at least immediately after connecting or after closing the switch, why do we use the source voltage? Because the source voltage is constant, but th this is a time function. This will change over time. Yeah, so yeah, if, if, the, if the switch is open, how, how large is the current? 
current must be zero. So then if we look at this equation here, the current cannot instantly change. If the current would instantly change, if it would jump up, um, then we would have some, the, the derivative of, of some jump would be infinite and we would get an infinite voltage across the inductor, which does is, not, is not too meaningful. So um, directly after switching on the switch and switching on the circuit, the current still must be zero for a short moment. And so now the question is, okay, we, we not only have this voltage, we also have this voltage here. We have the voltage across the resistor and the voltage across the resistor can be calculated. By, by Ohm's law, it's the resistance multiplied with the very same current. So if the, the, the current due to our law of induction here needs to be zero for a short moment of time, if the current is zero, then also this voltage will be zero. And if we close the switch, there, can be, there will be no voltage drop across the switch. So the only place where our source voltage can go is to the inductor. And so that's why we, ha we will have, for a short moment, we will have the full voltage across the inductor. So um, let's say VL for the time zero, uh, directly after closing the switch at the time zero will be our source voltage, will be 10 volt. And so this rate of change of current um, maybe I can also add here the t equals zero uh, divided by time um, will just be this voltage divided by the inductance. And so we have 10 volt divided by one milli Henry. So then the question is, um, what unit do we want to get at the end for a rate of change of current? Ampere per second <coughs> and Henry can also be written as volt seconds divided by ampere so the volts will cancel each other we get ampere per second which is nice and um, yeah one milli below the fraction bar one milli in the denominator is the same as one kilo in the numerator so we get um, one, no, 10 kilo ampere per second. So the current increases very rapidly, or we could also say it's 10 ampere per millisecond, um, which does not sound that large <laughs> as 10 kilo ampere per second, um, but it's the same at the end. So it just means that the current increases quite quickly. And the more voltage, the more current increase. And if we have more inductance, then current will take, will, will, will increase slower. That's the idea. Okay. Um, what questions do you have related to this task? Okay, no questions. Then we can continue with task B. And here as already discussed, the question is, what is the constant direct current to which the coil is yeah, fully, that we have there if the coil is fully charged? So here wh what happens so the, the the let's say the current this constant current that we are looking for is the current in the circuit if we wait long enough if time goes to infinity if the yeah if the coil is fully charged so any ideas how to calculate this there's one it's just the yeah it's just the current that we get due to the resistance so it's just a voltage divided by resistance um, and so the question is here I have already used V for the source voltage why do we also use the source voltage here 
in this case. It's the voltage drop that we will have across the resistor for a long time. So it's also, I could also say this is the voltage across the resistor if T goes to infinity. But why, why is this the case? There won't be exactly. So if we wait long enough, the current will not change. At some time, our, our coil is fully charged and the current will not change anymore. The, the current will not increase anymore. So the current will be constant. If we calculate the time derivative of a constant, it will be zero. So it also means the voltage drop across the inductance is zero. So now, at for, for um, after a very long time, this voltage will be zero. Still, we have no voltage drop across the switch still the source voltage of the source needs to go somewhere so it will go to the resistor and so the only voltage drop that we will have uh, is across the resistive part here of the coil and so we can also just insert this and say it's 10 volt divided by 1 ohm ohm is volt divided by ampere the volts will cancel each other and we get 10 ampere of constant current that we will have that we would have in this inductor if it's connected to a 10 volt voltage source um, after a long time. And yeah, so the, the, the um, a related question maybe is how long is this time? H how long do I would I need to wait? Um, until yeah, I get this 10 ampere almost. Uh, how does the rate of change probably be the same? Yeah, something like this. So if we check, so if we want to get to 10 ampere and if we have a rate of change of 10 ampere per millisecond, um, then it should just, so according to this, it should just take one millisecond. The thing is that it's not that the current will increase linearly and then will stop to increase. The current will increase. Um, I, I remember we had some task. If I go back to our exercise booklet, I think we had some task um, here. I know we don't have this task here in this exercise booklet, but the, 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 the current won't increase like this and then stop to increase the current will increase like an exponential function. So it will take not like your one millisecond, but yeah, three times this, five times this, something like this um, to get fully charged. And so this time constant um, is something that is not really part of this um, exercise here, but we could calculate it and we would call it tau. So this is like this time constant of charging. And um, yeah, so how did you calculate this? You, you just took th the current that we have here and divide the current by this rate of change that we have here. So divided by this di by dt. And so the the current, as we have seen, is voltage divided by resistance. And this rate of change here is voltage divided by inductance. And so we can skip, cancel the voltages and, and uh, change the order here of this double fraction. And then it's L divided by R. And this would be also the time constant that we get in this circuit if we would really solve the differential equation. And this also mm, yeah, somehow perfectly makes sense if we would look at the unit of this tau. It should be the unit of the inductance divided by the unit of the resistance. And the unit of inductance is, is Henry. And the unit of resistance is ohm. And if we rewrite Henry, 
Jetzt Volt Second divided by Ampere and Ohm is Volt divided by Ampere. So Ampere and Ampere and Volt and Volt will cancel each other and we get second at the end, which perfectly makes sense um, if we want to calculate a time constant. So this is the reminder that we should continue with task C. What is the magnetic flux of the coil? Or through the coil, better. Any ideas to calculate this? So we, we need to think about um, the L, the inductance itself. How, how is inductance defined? Or if you are asked, what is an inductance? Uh, what is an inductance? <laughs> how would you explain inductance? So. In inductance is, is, is a property of a coil or of an inductor. And if you have a coil or you, 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 you build a coil by, by taking a wire and turning the wire to a coil. Let me switch my camera. So here, here, here we have a coil. Um, so just a wire wound to some coil. So and what will happen if I feed the current through this coil? We will build up a magnetic field exactly. And so we will build up a magnetic field according to this um, according to this right hand rule. So yeah, it's always difficult to sketch, but you can you can imagine if I have if I have a if I have a current circle like this, um, yeah. So let let's say I, I have my coil in this direction. So coil is vertical, and one of these current turns is now horizontal. And the, let's say the current goes goes circles like this. So um, the thumb is the current, and my right hand makes the magnetic field. So if I have a current in this without breaking my arm, I always get a magnetic field that points in this direction down. And so if the current always does the same direction and circles going up, going up, I will always have a magnetic field um, and a magnetic flux in this direction. And so inductance now is what <laughs> is magnetic flux and magnetic flux we we call uh, we give this this letter uh, a capital phi and so it's the magnetic flux through this coil divided by the current that produces this flux this is what inductance means and how inductance is defined um, flux divided by current so it's a, it's a little bit similar or it's yeah this duality principle if you have a capacitor um, it's the charge divided by the voltage let me write a v for the voltage so also on some capacitor we store charges energies are stored in terms of some electric field and to build up these charges you need to have a certain voltage and a capacitor with a higher capacitance can store more charge per voltage. And here an inductor um, stores magnetic field, magnetic flux, and energy is saved in the magnetic field. And a higher inductor has more magnetic flux per current, let's say. So um, 
Anyhow, with this formula, we can try to calculate this magnetic flux, this V, by just multiplying the inductance and the current. Um, and so we have one milli Henry multiplied with the 10 ampere. And uh, so Henry once again is volt seconds divided by ampere, so ampere will cancel each other, and we get 10 millivolt second. Um, and volt second is the unit for the magnetic flux. Um, you can also rewrite this as Weber, but um, yeah, you, you could also just leave it like this. Yeah, it's like the same. So for the magnetic flux, you have volt seconds. Remember for the charge we had, which unit? Ampere second, and ampere second could be rewritten as Coulomb, and the volt seconds can be rewritten as Weber. Okay, and that's more or less the solution for this exercise task here. And there's a question. Yeah, just got a question. In, uh, during the lecture, we had the different sign for the magnetic flux as well. Is it like the, it looks like a trident? I don't know how to describe it. Um, or is that something else? Um, you mean, let's say, a symbol that looks like this? Yeah. yeah. So this is this is um, a letter called Psi, and this one that we have here is called Phi. And f sometimes people use this one, sometimes people use this one. Okay. I, I, I would say it's you, you mean the same thing with this. Um, Magnetic, it's, it's like using V and U for voltage. 